let me introduce you to Walt. Not this Walt, but instead the weighted average lease term, and it's an important term in commercial and industrial real estate. It's a metric investors use for multi-tenant buildings or portfolios, and it's a similar concept to any weighted average calculation where certain numbers are more important than others. Let's go through a common example first before we get to the weighted average lease term. So let's jump over to Excel and we'll walk through this first example quickly and then we'll get into the calculation for Walt. So what's often common with schools is that they'll have a weighted average. So the final might be assigned more weighting than the, than the assignments and tests. So we'll just come up with an arbitrary scenario here. Let's say we have assignments, tests, and we also have a final. And up here we'll put what the grades were for each of those. And then we'll put the weighting right here. And let's just say the assignments were assigned a weighting of 15%. Uh, the tests were 35%. And the uh, final was uh, 50%. So this should actually work. Let's just convert all these cells to percentage. Uh, so now here's 15, 35, and 50. Let's say for the assignments, student did really good. They got 88%. Tests, they did 92%. Maybe on the final, they were partied a little too hard the night before, and let's say they got a 75% on the final. To get our weighted average on what the final grade is gonna be, is you're just gonna multiply these. these. So if we take this one, multiply it by the weighting, and then we can drag this down, it'll auto-populate those cells. And then here we can just sum these. And that's essentially what the grade would be. In this weighted scenario, the final grade would be, uh, they might round that up to 83%. So it's a very similar concept in commercial industrial real estate as well. Just a little bit extra work that we have to do. Uh, so let's put one column for tenants. And I recently did a video where I talked about some of the interesting or peculiar uses found in, in industrial real estate. Uh, so let's use some of these just, just for fun. Uh, so Mike, in uh, Winnipeg, he, he inherited an industrial building that had a pole dancing studio in there. Uh, Ron Rohde, one of my favorite YouTubers, uh, he's a lawyer and an investor. He had a golf cart uh, company in his uh, one of his industrial buildings. Uh, Gordon, uh, he's a podcaster as well. He had a uh, one that was uh, a facility for overweight dogs that had joint pain. So let's just call these guys overweight dogs. Uh, I've talked about doggy daycares uh, on that video as well. Uh, very, I love dogs, but I hate doggy daycares. Uh, and then uh, churches is another one that's a very tough use. Uh, but let's just say that these are what the uses are. We got the weirdest industrial building uh, in North America uh, that we're using on this. Let's put another category for square footage. Uh, and then we'll also put the uh, rent per square foot. We'll just denote it as that. Uh, pole dancing, let's say they're in 2,000 square feet. Golf cart, let's say they're in 5,000 square feet. The overweight dogs, still, still one of the most interesting uses I've heard. Let's say they're smaller, 1,500. Doggy daycares, let's say they're 4,000 square feet. And for this purpose, let's just assume that the church is the largest group in here, and we'll put them at 20,000 square feet. And then the rent per square foot, uh, we'll just use some easy numbers. Let's say $8 a foot, $10 a square foot, $11 a square foot. Maybe the doggy daycares, we charged a premium because it's such a, a tough use. And then same with the churches as well. And we'll just do some real quick formatting on here just to make this easy. We don't need the decimals right now. Uh, for the rent per square foot, we'll put that as, as the dollars. Uh, and then this is going to be the, the total here. So this is what the, their annual rent will be. If we just multiply these, again, we can take this number or this cell and just drag it. This is their annual rent. And again, we might want to format this uh, just to put it as dollars. It's a big number in there. And then we need to sum this column, which you'll see why in a second. So that's the total yearly rent uh, at the bottom, this 442,000 number. Uh, and then we need to have least term remaining. 
which is going to be a bit of a bigger cell. Let's, we'll try and keep this, uh, okay. So let's say the lease term remaining, we're going to quote this in months, which will make a little bit more sense as we're going through this. Let's say they have 37 months, let's say 76 months, 15 months, 48 months, 36 months. And let's say the church only has, oh, sorry, we're already on there. So the church was at 36 months. So now what we want to do is we want to multiply the annual rent by the lease term remaining. So again, pretty simple formula. And there's ways that you can do this to make this a lot easier. I'm just showing the long step on it to really help it uh, make sense. Again, if we come in and we drag that down, here's all of our, our numbers on what we can have remaining. And then the beautiful part about this is that we can take Let's say our weighted average lease term is right here. We want to take uh, the, sorry, first we need to take the sum of all of these. And then we can take this number, the 18 million number, and we can divide it by the total annual rent. And that gives us 41.4. That's the weighted average lease term expressed in months. And if we want to do it in years, pretty simple calculation as well. Just take this and divide it by 12. And you can see the weighted average lease term for this hypothetical situation is 3.45 years or 41.4 months. The weighted average lease term can sometimes be called the weighted average unexpired lease term or WALT or the weighted average lease expiry or WALE. Now a question that comes up next is what is a good WALT? Well, before jumping into that, I have to stress that there's a lot that goes into buying investment real estate, so the WALT alone isn't simply one factor that gets considered. And of course, I always recommend that you have a lawyer, accountant, and broker involved anytime you're buying or selling real estate. As you might have guessed, there isn't a perfect WALT as every investor will have their own unique preferences. When Armancio Ortega purchased a $900 million industrial portfolio last year, it had a WALT over 10 years, which is a pretty good indication he put a priority on having stable cash flow for a long period of time. Other investors, however, might prefer shorter WALTs if they feel there's a good opportunity to renew leases at higher rates. Over the past few years, a number of investors have wanted these shorter WALTs because they wanted to take advantage of rapidly rising rents. On the flip side, it might come with more risk if the market were to soften during that time. If you've used WALT making an investment decision, I'd love to hear in the comments below. Let me know how or if it influenced your decision. And if you want to check out some of these weird and wild uses found in industrial buildings, check out this video right here. Uh...